ever seen a wobbly bridge collapse under marching feet? That's the power of resonance. Today, we are diving into the science of natural frequency, the hidden heartbeat of structures like buildings and bridges. Imagine a two-bay garage. Those beams and columns have a sweet spot, a frequency they just love to vibrate at. Hit that note with wind, traffic, or even your grandma's Zumba routine and things get shaky and real fast. We'll crack the code of why this happens, how engineers avoid wobbly disasters, and why understanding this natural rhythm is key to keeping our buildings safe and sound. So buckle up and let's explore the natural frequency of two-bay frames using abacus and hand calculations. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. The problem that I'm going to solve today is a two bay concrete frame. The middle column has a rigid base and outside columns have a pinned base. E is given, M is given and the section sizes are given. And we have to find out the frequencies in horizontal direction. It means we have to find out frequencies only in X direction. Let us solve this problem first of all in Abacus. For solving the problem in Abacus, as usual, I will be using SI units. And these are the units that I'll be focusing on. I will use these nine steps to model this problem in Abacus. First step is part where we will create geometry. We'll start with Abacus standard. Go to part module. Double click on part, frame, and this time I'm modeling this in 2D planar space, wire, and maximum dimension is say 10, and click continue. So I'm going to create two bay frame starting from here, and then again start from here. I will give equal length to horizontal dimension, and I will give equal length to the columns as well. You go to constraint, equal length, Press shift key, click here, click here. Equal length has been assigned. And then press shift key, click here, click here, and click here. Equal length will be assigned to columns as well. And then I will dimension the beam. The beam is 6.1. And I will see the entire structure. The column is 3.65. The section has been created. Click done. To create the section second step is property module where we will define materials and assign cross sections next is property module first i will define the materials and i will say concrete go to mechanical elastic elastic properties 30 e9 polymer ratio 0 0.2 and i will define the density as well density is 2400 but here i will highly minimize the density because the mass of the columns is neglected and uh, columns are only defined by stiffness and the beam is infinitely rigid so e raised minus four click ok the material has been defined uh, then i will define three different uh, profiles two for columns and one for beam so let's define first of all left and right column rectangular the left and right column is 0.15 by 0.15 0 0.15 click ok then define another profile mid column it's 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 and then i will define the beam as well although beam section is rigid but i will define it anyway because the mass will not be taken into account as i have highly reduced the density beam section is 0 0.2 0 0.2 and then i will define the section the first is left and right column l and R call continue and profile is left and right columns concrete poisons ratio 0.2 click ok the section has been defined and next I will define middle column mid call and here I will choose mid call concrete 0.2 middle column has been defined then I'll define a beam as well beam click ok from here choose the beam section 0 0.2 click ok now I will assign those sections go to frame then section assignment first i will assign left columns so choose left columns click done and l and r columns and then i will assign the middle column go here and middle column and then i will assign the 
beams. After I have assigned the properties, then I will define the beam section orientation and that will define the local axis of the beam. So go to assign beam section orientation, click on the entire structure and uh, accept the default. And I would like to see the 3D view. The beam section orientation has been defined. Click OK. Third step is assembly module where we will assemble all parts. Go to module, go to assembly. Double click here. The assembly has been defined. Fourth step is step module where we define all analysis steps and parameters. And again, go to a step, create a new step, frac is linear perturbation, frequency, click continue. And here I will use everything as default and I want six eigenmodes. Click OK. Fifth is interaction module where we define contact interactions and constraints. In interaction, first of all, I will define the reference point tools and I will define this point as the reference point. Then I will attach this reference point to both beams so that inertia or mass can be assigned. In that way, that will distribute the mass across the beam. You go to constraints, say rigid body constraint, click OK. And here, tie nodes, click on these two beams, click OK. And reference point is this reference point, the middle of two beams. And I will say adjust point to center of mass at start of the analysis. I click OK. That reference point has been tied up with the beams now. Now this will help me in assigning the mass to the beam and it will treat the beams as rigid as well because the contribution of mass from density is not taken into account because I have highly reduced the density. And go to inertia. Here, say mass. Point mass, click continue. I want to assign 500 kg mass to the rigid point. So 500, click OK, mass has been assigned. Sixth is load module where we define boundary conditions and loading. Then I will go to load where I will define the boundary conditions. Go to boundary conditions, first is fix. Double click on BCs, fix. Initial displacement rotation. And I want to fix the base of middle column. And I will fix everything here. The next is pin. I will click pin displacement rotation and I will hold shift key and I will choose these two points. Click done. And here translational degree of freedom will be constrained. Rotation is allowed. Seventh is mesh module where we define mesh size and element type. Next step is mesh. Here, first of all, I will mesh the model at part level and I will assign the element type, select everything, and I want to use quadratic elements. Click done, and then I want to mesh the model with 0 0.2 seeds. Click OK, and then I will mesh the model. OK to mesh part, yes. Eight is job module, which we use to run and monitor analysis. The next step is job. I will define a job. I will call it frac. Two bay frame TBF, click continue. Job has been defined. At this point, I will set up the working directory and save the model. Now I will submit the job. The job is submitted. I will monitor it. Ninth is visualization module used for viewing results. A clean solution. The first thing I want to notice is the mass of the structure. It should be 500. If there is a variation, it means there is some mistake. So mass is nearly. 500, which is fine. And then I want to have a look at the frequency. So first frequency is 11.325. And I wanted to have a look at the frequency, which is in the horizontal direction. The horizontal direction is X direction. One star that you see here, this is not relevant. It is due to rigid body mode. So we will ignore the first one. And here, participation factors. What I'm looking at is the second one. So X component is dominant. It means that entire mass has been utilized in X direction. It means our beam is a rigid beam and it is displacing the frame towards right and left. Let us see how does it compare with the manual calculations. So remember this frequency 11.325. So this is the example. We have to determine the natural frequency. Uh, assume the horizontal girder is infinitely rigid and neglect the mass of columns. This problem has been adapted from Structural Dynamics by Mario Paz, page 
21, but I have used different dimensions here. So first the stiffness is if we model a column with a rigid base, the top of the beam is assumed to be roller when we are moving this in X direction. And for fixed roller condition, we have 12 EI over L cube. That's the stiffness of fixed roller condition. But when we have the base as pinned, as here, the top is considered to be a roller that is simply supported condition. For simply supported condition, we have 3 EI over L. And that's the reason we have 2 times 3 EI over L because we have 2 columns at the end. And I is BH cube over 12. So for this section, we get this value 3 to 5, 10 raised minus 6. For left and right column, we get 42.1, 10 raised minus 6 meter power 4. If we input these values back in this equation, we get value of K as 2.56 into 10 raised 6 Newton per meter. And angular frequency omega is equal to under root K over M. And if we put value of K, 2.56, 10 raised 6, M is mass, which is 500 kg, we get 71.6 radian per second. The natural frequency or frequency in hertz is 1 over 2 pi of angular frequency. Angular frequency is natural as well, but it's just a different way of presenting the frequency. And we get 11.4. And you saw that from numerical model using Abacus, we got 11.32. So let's go back. In results, I want to have a look at the 3D view. I want to render the model so go to view ODB display options and here I will render it by 1.5 and I want to see the results for second mode. First mode was rigid body mode. Here I will click on this button to see the multiple plots. I would like to have a look at the movie and here you can see that it is moving in x direction and frequency is 11.32 that is very close to the manual solution in manual solution we got 11.4 this means that abacus can model the frequency really very well here we are interested in frequency in horizontal direction only but if you want it you can have a look at frequency in y direction and frequency in z direction as well and if you wanted to see other modes, you can simply change the step, step frame. This is the axial mode. And frequency is very high frequency. Anything which is more than 10 is a bit on the higher side. We tend to ignore higher frequencies. As usual, the link to lecture slides is in tinyurl.com slash jakereshi abacus. And you can have a look at this playlist as well.